Hey guys, how's it going? Ryan here back with another video on functional programming with FPTS. In a previous video, I talked about the option type and how you can chain together transformations in order to like clean up your code and streamline these transformations, but that works really well for when you're dealing with a single option, a single piece of data, but you begin running into trouble when you have multiple options and you need to combine all of these options together in different ways. Now, FPTS has a way of dealing with this type of situation. It's called do notation. So that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. And it's something that I think a lot of people get caught up on because it has a weird syntax. But I think the trick is just to focus on when you would use do notation. And that'll help kind of develop an intuition for what it is and how it's supposed to be used. I'm gonna start off here and let's just say that we have two different options. Maybe they're holding two different data types. So I'll say a opt equals um, option from nullable one. And let's create another one. Now it doesn't really matter what these are holding. Uh, like I said, they could be two completely different types, but basically we're in a situation where in order to create my next thing, the next uh, piece of data in this transformation, let's call it C, I need to somehow combine the values from both of these options together. And of course, maybe one or both of these options aren't even defined, right? They could be none, in which case I can't, you know, uh, proceed with the calculation any further. So it's almost as if what I need to do is, is something like this where so so previously we had a single option and we could just map and get the value out of it, right? Uh, but now we have two. So I almost need something that might look like this. Uh, maybe it unpacks both of these values when they're both defined and then will let me create the next value. It's almost you can kind of think about it like uh, like the JavaScript function every, right? You can put a predicate in here and it will run the predicate over the array. And if the predicate is satisfied for every value, uh, then it returns true. So we kind of need an equivalent for that for options. Um, so there's actually multiple ways of going about this. Uh, I'm just gonna cover one way and it's called uh, do notation. Other languages have different names for it, but the way that it works is we'll open up our pipe operator, which we've seen before, for the first argument to the pipe operator, instead of feeding in uh, the piece of data or the thing that I care about, the thing that I'm transforming, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna say o.do. So basically, the way that I, I kind of think about it is that this is, it's like a, a different mode for, for the pipe operator. I'm, what I'm saying is, okay, I'm not gonna use pipe in a normal way. I'm actually gonna use a do notation. We feed it o.do, and this do notation can work for different types. Here we have options. It will also work for either and task. Uh, and so then in those cases, you would just use those particular modules. But here we're, we're working with options. So I'll use this one. What I wanna do next is I wanna feed it in both of the options that I wanna work with. Now, this is where the, the syntax gets a little bit weird. So I'm gonna say o.bind and the first thing that it's asking me for is a name. Now this is the name of the variable. This is what I'm gonna call the thing that's inside of this option. So I'll just call it A. And next I need to give it the option. Now I can't just say a.opt, even though that's kind of what I'm going for here. But all you really need to know is that it needs a function. So I'll just give it a function that returns a.opt. And, and there, and so I'm done with A and now I wanna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do it for B. So I'll feed it bopt and I'll call that B. Again, the, the notation here is a little bit weird. Other languages have a cleaner way of dealing with this. So now that we've bound each of our options, what we're going to do is what we essentially set out to do, which is to map. And map is going to give me an object and that object will contain the things that I was looking for inside. If both of these options were defined, then option, then this object will have both the A value and the B value inside of it. So I can just say object.A maybe plus object.B. Now, of course, this doesn't have to be a summation. We could be doing anything here to combine both of these values, but I'm just gonna keep it simple and take their sum. Now, what you'll see a lot is instead of calling this object, 
what we do is to unpack these values. So I'll destructure like this. And there you go. What you can notice here is a few things. So first, the name that we gave our value in this bind operator is the name that it will show up as here. So if I were to put a a here, it says you know this isn't this isn't available. So I could you know have a a there, and now it works right. Uh, and a, another thing to notice is that TypeScript has has done a good job here of uh, preserving our types. So we can see that a and b are not typed as any. Uh, they actually have the the number type. And uh, lastly, if we look at what this returns, you'll see that this c is an option. Which makes sense, right? Even though we're adding these together and I expect to get a number out of it, it's possible that neither one of these options were defined. And in that case, uh, we'll end up with none as our option. If they were both defined, then it'll contain our value, right? So, so the utility here is that I have multiple options and in order for me to move forward with this calculation, I need all of them to be combined. Uh, I need all of them to be defined. Here, we only use two, but you could you know, have more than that. So this was a little test example just to, to kind of introduce the syntax. Let's look at a more realistic example. So maybe instead of this, what I have is a user type. I'm not gonna implement these. Uh, maybe I have a user score and I have a function get user that's going to return an option of a user. So if we can find the user, then it will return it. And I'm not gonna worry about the implementation, so I'll just return none. And then we have another function that says get user score that requires a user, and it will return a user score. And then we have one more. So let's say that in order to get the user level, we need the user, and we need a user score and maybe it just returns a number. Okay, uh, so, so this is a more realistic example because we have a function that returns an option, we have a different function that returns another option, and then we need to combine the values of both of these together in order to get the thing that we're ultimately after. So this is a perfect setup for do notation. So what I'll do here is let's say our level is going to be equal to, and I open up a pipe. Let's start off our do notation. Then I'm going to first get the user, and I'll call it user, and I'm just gonna drop in the get user function here. Of course, get user is going to return an option of a user, so it might not even return anything defined. And then after that, I'm going to create the user score, which I'll just call score. For this, in order for me to calculate a score, I actually need to get the user. So uh, for my function, I will destructure this and I say get user score and I'll feed it the user. Now, of course, notice that the get user score, this function only runs if I have a user that's defined. So if I didn't get a user in this first step, then the second step will never run and we just return none uh, for this pipe. Now, lastly, I'm going to open up a map. I will uh, destructure this to get my user and my score. I will get user level, which requires both. And this will return a number, right? So ultimately what I expect to get out of this is an option of my number, which is the, the user level. Now, if we run into a situation where we can't fetch the user or we can't get a score for the user, maybe they haven't played any games yet, maybe they haven't registered for the contest, whatever, then their level will be returned as none. And then you know we could display a message saying, go play a game or go register or whatever they need to do. So this is just a quick uh, introduction to do notation. And um, again, I think a lot of people get caught up on the syntax. It is, it's kind of funky. I, I mean, I agree with it, but that's not the point. Uh, you don't want to get caught up on that. The point is I've got multiple options or multiple eithers, multiple tasks, and I need to unpack all of them if they are all defined and somehow combine their values together. And that's when you want to use do notation. That's when it comes in handy. So that's it for now. 
good luck in your coding, and I'll see you guys next time.